what type of competitions can you do with air guns? What gear is needed? And also, what about training with air guns? Is that something worthwhile? All that right now with Pyramid Air. Hey, welcome into Gun Talk Nation. This Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by ATN, the future of optics, Springfield Armory, Safari Land, We Save Lives, and by Arms Corps. Today on Gun Talk Nation, we're talking about something that's near and dear to my heart. It's super fun. Every time I go onto Pyramid Air's website, it's I've, I've told you guys this before, it's, it's mind-blowing the variety of stuff that's available to you. But today on the show, we have Tyler Patner from Pyramid Air. Welcome in, man. How's it going, Ryan? We're doing great. We're doing great. I mean, I always, when I talk about Pyramid Air, or really just air guns in general, these days, you, you got to always say, look, this is probably not the BB gun that you grew up with. And the world of air guns, it's it's just, it's bigger than actually almost, gosh, it's almost bigger than regular guns. Because all we're talking about is it's just powered by air. But then you've got, you actually have pistols and shotguns and rifles and all these, you know, semi-automatic full auto, Hey, full auto delivered to your door. There's just such a wide variety. Um, tell them about your background in air gun shooting. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, so my, my job title is product manager for pyramid air, um, which encompasses everything from, you know, touching stuff before it goes onto the website, both physically and for our online listings, also do product review videos and all sorts of other fun stuff. Um, but really my background with air guns starts long before I started working for pyramid air. And, uh, you know, with, with air guns for me, it was like kind of a, a love it for shot thing, uh, where it's something I could do in the backyard. It was quiet. It was really accurate. Like that's one of the things that hooked me in right away. And, um, and it's just a lot of fun and it gives you the ability to broaden your shooting horizons uh, further than just going to the range, you know, with your firearms. Um, so for me, I, I really started uh, keying in on some of those competitive things, uh, shooting an air gun discipline called field target competition, uh, which is kind of like 3D archery, but with a gun and a scope, if I had to kind of relate it to something that the listeners might be familiar with. Yeah, so um, tell them more about that, because what are some of the, what's an example of some courses of fire? What type of distances are you guys shooting? Sure. So um, from a uh, like a length, you're, you're basically spending the afternoon, um, you know, shooting 60 shots. So there's uh, two targets per lane usually. And you have courses that are typically 15 lanes. Uh, and here in the U.S., we shoot all the targets twice. Um, so that gives you an opportunity if you miss the first shot to make it up on the second one or to look like a fool on the second one because you hit it the first time, right? Um, it, we don't talk about what happens if you miss both twice. Um, <laughs> but field target is uh, it, it's a pretty slow-going discipline. It's not like running and gunning, so to speak, uh, but it's definitely more precision-minded. So targets can be anywhere from 10 to 55 yards away, uh, and the kill zone sizes, so the way the targets work is there's a hole in the face of the target uh, that has a, a – paddle connected to the back of it so you pass your pellet through the hole in the front and uh it, once it hits the paddle it knocks the target over so you get that kind of reaction through the scope which is cool yeah um but those target sizes vary from three-eighths of an inch all the way up to an inch and a half uh, and obviously you know your three-eighths stuff is going to be closer and your inch and a half stuff is going to be further away um and there's also uh, what we call discipline shots so your kneeling shots and your standing shots where you're required to take those shots from that, those positions. Um, but yeah, it's a real challenging game uh, just because there's a lot to take in uh, because you're using an optic and, and the way in which you determine the distance to the target is actually by using the parallax adjustment on your scope to range find the target, um, which is a really kind of a weird concept to a lot of people. Uh, but, but it's something that once you try it, it kind of clicks. Um, and, and then it's just a matter of making sure that your gun setup is, is good. So depending on the, the division you're shooting in, you're either, you know, making those click adjustments kind of like a PRS shooter would for different distances, uh, or like in our hunter division, which is by far the most popular, you're actually using hold over and hold under, uh, with your scope reticle to compensate for those different distance targets. Wow. So the, <laughs> there's a lot going into this and you kind of teased it. It is a little, sounds a little bit like PRS, but you're talking about an inch and a half target at 55 yards. That is not easy. 
You know, it's funny. If you talk about the capabilities of a modern day pre-charged pneumatic air gun, an inch and a half and 55 yards is, is quite easy. Um, but the fact, the simple fact is we don't shoot from a bench, right? And if we were shooting from a bench, everybody should clear every lane on every course out there. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is depending on the division you're shooting, you're either supporting the gun, uh, solely with your body or with, you know, maybe a set of shooting sticks. Okay. So it, it's not, you're not that stable. You have to take into account kind of your shaking, your wobbliness. Um, and then on top of that, you have the external factors like the wind, um, lighting conditions, you know, all, all sorts of things come into play when you start talking about what it takes to make a shot, you know, any of the shots, let alone one that's 55 yards away. And also what's great about this is the, again, you know, you can do this. It's not very loud. Um, so yep. there's probably a lot more flexibility in practicing this in your backyard or, or, or finding a place to shoot is not quite as challenging. Now you mentioned pre-charged pneumatic. So what type of gear, what type of guns and, and pellets and all that stuff are you guys using generally? So typically, uh, on the, the PCP side for those pre-charged guns, you'll see everything from kind of the entry level, you know, $300 stuff, your Umarex gauntlets, your Air Venturi Avengers all the way up to some of the ultra high-end competition guns from Air Arms and uh, like Onshoots. Those are, those are two bigger names there. Um, you know, it, when, you, when it comes to field target, those guys, those guys are like at the top. Uh, Walther, Fine Work Battle, like they all make competitive field target guns, but you're talking about two or $3,000 guns. Um, and it really depends on tailoring the equipment to the, the division you're shooting. Uh, in, in our hunter division here in the U.S., it's a little bit more, um, run what you've rung type of a type of a setup. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can get by with a little bit, uh, less in terms of the equipment, whereas, uh, our WFTF, which stands for world field target federation. And that's actually a international discipline, um, where that portion of field target is, uh, is a little bit higher profile, more like a formula one, if I had to relate it back to something, um, where you, those are the guns with the crazy adjustments and, uh, you see massive scopes on those things, uh, and that's it. Like I said, it's the Formula One of air gunning, really. It's uh, and and people make a lot of their own parts and pieces, and and all sorts of interesting things for their guns, which which adds a, a cool element to it. But there's also a spring piston side of this as well. So if if you're on a budget, or if you just don't have the means or the wanting to go to a PCP and having to deal with filling a gun, uh, you can actually shoot uh, a spring piston gun, and that's a separate set of divisions was still kind of the same uh, classes with the hunter division and WFPF and, uh, and all those things. Um, but, you know, a little bit easier to get into from a, a price point and also a functionality uh, like barrier to entry. Yeah. And, and talk about scopes for a minute, because I mean, my understanding is these are air gun specific scopes. In some cases, so with the spring piston guns, that, that can be a bit tricky. Most manufacturers nowadays, uh, this was a big thing like 10 or 12 years ago, especially, you know, as kind of more scope manufacturers come out, like it seems I'm, you guys know every year it's like you go to SHOT Show and there's like, I've never heard of that scope company or that scope company. You know, there's yes. this, they're popping up all the time. Um, most scope manufacturers, this is something that's been taken to account, into account now from a manufacturing standpoint. So your spring piston or gas piston air guns, uh, there are a lot of scope brands that work just fine out there. Uh, and, and you know, most of them have lifetime warranties on top of that. So even if you do have issues, you're going to get taken care of. Um, but on the pre-charged pneumatic side, you can really use whatever you want. But when we talk about field target scopes, the scope has to go down to 10 yards from a parallax adjustment perspective. So if, if you can't clarify an image at 10 yards, you're going to have a tough time hitting that target especially when it's a three eighths inch kill zone. Absolutely. Um, and and so, go, so, going back to the accuracy, because we were talking about the size of the targets and we talked about Walther and on shoots. I mean, I know those brands are popular target gun brands for the Olympics. Yep. And I, my understanding is in the Olympics, the air gun competitions are some of the most accurate guns being used. I mean, how accurate are these guns? Yeah, absolutely. Um, they, they, that was actually the best way to say that. They are the most accurate air guns that are, that are made today. 
Um, now, the, what, what you're seeing in the Olympics is a much slower shooting version of what's used in field target. So in the Olympics, you're typically seeing guns that shoot five to 600 feet per second. Mm-hmm. Um, for field target use, those same guns are typically modified by the manufacturer to operate uh, right around 800 feet per second. And then uh, that, that's uh, 12 foot pounds is kind of the international standard. And then here in the U.S., uh, for a couple of the divisions that we have, they actually allow up to 20 foot pounds. So that would be most guns that, you know, a 177 caliber in that thousand foot per second range, that's roughly a, a 20 foot pound gun. So, well, that's um, because they're, these are for hunting. I mean, we're talking about, when we talk about field guns, they could be used for hunting and a little yeah. bit more powerful. But just, you know, when we talk about the Olympics, just to talk about what these guns are capable of and really what good air guns, air rifles are capable of, I mean, the group sizes are, I mean, you're, you're almost shooting one hole. Yeah. yeah, so so any of your 10-meter stuff, you know, the guns are actually all tested from a vice at the factories, at their respective factories. Um, and basically, if, if it doesn't put five shots into a single hole at 10 meters, um, it doesn't go out the door. It's that simple. <laughs> um, it, it, now, for the for the field target side of things, those guns obviously shooting a little bit further. Most manufacturers will test at 50 yards or 50 meters, and that's uh, typically the standards are about a half inch. So if, you, if it can't hold a half inch group from a vice at that distance, then it doesn't leave. Yeah, it's really impressive. And and if you want to check this out, if you, if you go over to pyramidair.com, it's P Y R A M Y D. So it's two Ys, Pyramid Air. They actually have a deal for our our listeners. Gun and if you enter the code Gun Talk Nation at checkout, you'll get $10 off any $50 purchase. So I I just want to get that out there for our audience, Tyler, but um so talk about um the other, the other options for people, if they go, well, maybe I'm not, that's, that doesn't sound like my game. Are there other options for them when it comes to air gun competitions? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you are into more of a, um, uh, something a little higher speed, I suppose, um, NRL 22, I'm sure most of your listeners will be familiar with that, mm-hmm. um, kind of like a 22 rimfire specific version of PRS, basically. Um You know, there is actually an air gun division now in NRL 22 competitions. So you can, you know, take most of your higher end kind of more powerful pre-charged pneumatic guns are going to be capable of shooting in that kind of a competition really well. Um, You know, outside of that, you have the traditional kind of what we talked about a little bit with the Olympics, you know, your 10 meter competitions. Um, And that's actually really where a lot of youth shooters start is they, you know, will get involved with either, you know, a a junior or high school level kind of 10 meter program. Uh, And actually that that's a great avenue into college as well, uh, because those are scholarship programs at a lot of universities now. Yeah, a lot of a lot of kids get started in 4-H or something like that. And that's a great way to get started. Um, Now, on the the NRL. um, air gun side are they shooting the same course of fire as the 22 or is it a little bit different you know this is one of the things actually it just started last year so i'm not even super familiar with it um my initial understanding was that at your local matches you're shooting the same course of fire Mm -hmm. um but i could be wrong about that like i know they just had i believe their national championships and i'm not sure if it was the same course of fire or not but i believe it is um but even with that said you know, one of the interesting things about air guns has been kind of this subset uh, of ammo type. So normally most people are familiar with the, the kind of badminton, um, you know, what we call a Diabolo shaped pellet. Um, uh, what we've seen on the small bore side is actually uh, a lot more slugs coming out. So, you know, a, a conical bullet, basically. Okay. Um, and, and the ballistic advantages there are many. Uh, and especially with some of these higher end guns that are capable of pushing them up near a thousand feet per second, you know, you're talking about having very, very comparable ballistics to a 22 rim fire, not necessarily the same output power. Um, but you know, we all know past 50 meters, you know, 22 rim fire is not the most accurate thing in the world. Um, and in a lot of cases, you know, an air gun shooting a slug, if you have it set up right, can be just as accurate. Um, so it, it really does make it a comparable, uh, option from a shooting perspective. 
Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by Smith & Wesson. The new M&P Shield Plus 9mm Micro Compact is their newest offering. It's a 13 plus 1 capacity, flat face trigger, enhanced grip angle. I like the grip angle of the M&Ps and a more balanced grip texture. Customize the Shield Plus with different sight and safety options. Build yours at smith-wesson.com. Also, Arms Core, the newest addition to the Rock Island Armory Imports VR series is the VR82 20 gauge semi-auto shotgun featuring five plus one capacity the familiar ar style design flip up sights and also a patent pending buffer ths buckstock that makes it compatible with most other commercial buffer tubes out there so you can kind of customize it find out more at armscore.com also gun talk nation is brought to you by safari land their 575 iwb holster it's designed to fit multiple firearms in one holster it's now available in slim fits for the glocks Springfield, SIG, MMPs, and more. The 575 is optics capable. It offers fully adjustable cant and a unique grip lock system for security. So there's sort of an extra layer there to hold it in. Uh, visit safariland.com and use the code GUNTALK20 for 20% off holsters and accessories through June 30th. What have you guys seen as as changes in the last uh, year or two? Different technology, different products, different ways people are using these. Sure, um, you know one of the things that uh, that's really changed, like I said, has been that that slug as an ammunition type. Uh, we've seen a bunch of new manufacturers come out uh, into that field. Some established pellet manufacturers have started to dip their toes in. And then you have a couple kind of specialty manufacturers of slugs specifically. Um, and it's really brought a lot more awareness to that side of the market and made people um, kind of look at things a little bit differently because you, you get a lot of, like I said before, a lot of ballistic advantages over shooting a pellet. Um, when you move to a slug, it just becomes a matter of, you know, can my gun shoot slugs accurately? And that's another side of, you know, the market where we've seen a lot of manufacturers starting to make um, guns with barrels that are more slug friendly um, okay. because they, they know that's something that people want. So typically that means it's going to be something that um, traditionally air gun barrels have been choked. Uh, that means, you know, so to shoot a slug, you're not going to want a choked barrel. Um, for those that don't know what a choke barrel is, it basically necks down at the very end of the barrel um, to, to basically size the projectile as it leaves the bore and make sure everything's nice and concentric and consistent. Um, with a slug, obviously being a much harder projectile, you don't want that anymore. Um, so a lot of manufacturers are looking at non-choked barrels with faster twist rates, um, you know, and, and guns that are capable of pushing more air, which equals more power to be able to shoot these slugs accurately. And are those mainly for target shooting or could you use that for hunting as well? You can do both. Um, and that's the great thing is, it, you know, as long as you know what's beyond your target, which is, you know, a, a, uh, every hunter should be aware of that regardless of what you're shooting. Um, you know, slugs carry a lot further and carry a lot more energy further, uh, which is why that's a, more important than when you're shooting a pellet, of course. Uh, but it's really expanded what people can do with hunting as well. Uh, I've seen people taking shots well over 150 yards with uh, with 22 and 25 caliber slugs, which is really mind-blowing <laughs> to think that, you know, yes, just it in is. a couple where it's gone, so... That's crazy. Um, yeah. Now let's talk about air guns for for training because a lot of our audience, they probably are more on the gun side and they probably go, well, I have some air guns, but air guns for training because we have all of these replica or, or similar type of guns that are out there, whether it's a concealed carry thing or an AR-15 style air gun. Um, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that this was actually a huge thing for uh, me personally during, you know, kind of the madness and the, the ammo increases, uh, from a price perspective and also the scarcity during the pandemic, um, you know, air guns can really be used in, in a very similar training application that you would be using either your rim fire or your nine millimeter, whatever caliber you prefer to carry. Um, you know, at the range, right, in, in kind of cre recreating a real-world scenario for yourself, whether you're 
a fan of doing, you know, uh, one reload, one drills, or, you know, you want to set up your, a little course of fire, you know, you can do that just as well with your BB gun version of your Glock 17 or your Springfield XDM. Uh, or on the rifle side, you know, uh, Crossman has a bunch of uh, semi and full auto capable AR replicas, whether you run, you know, a carbine, pistol, whatever uh, type of AR, they, they basically have something that'll fit what you want to do. Uh, and you can run them out of the same holsters, set up your slings the same way, run comparable optics, whatever you want to do can be done with a BB or pellet replica. And that's really, um, it really, people have started to figure this out finally. Um, and it's made, uh, it, it, I think it's made believers out of a lot of folks when we talk about the the, uh, like the efficacy of air guns as a training tool. Well, especially, and you kind of mentioned it, is the price of ammo and just, frankly, the availability of ammo right now is just, it's very tough to find ammo that you want or find it at the price you want. But it absolutely is true that you can shoot pellet guns or BB guns and get a lot of trigger time for a fraction, a fraction, fraction of the cost. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the great thing about that is you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's not going to be realistic. Well, actually, the guns are made today. A lot of the guns, anyway, are made with like a full blowback. So so what that means is the slide reciprocates with every shot, just like your firearm does. Now, of mm-hmm. course, it's not going to be nearly the recoil level of your 9 mil, your 40 or your 45. Uh, but it's actually quite similar to a 22 rimfire. A little bit slower in terms of the way it feels, but, you know, really doesn't jar the hands too much. But, but, you know, requires you to reacquire your sight picture after that initial shot, um, which is a great thing because it means, you know, number one, you have to practice the same skill set. And number two, your trigger discipline still has to be just as good as it would be with the real steel. So, um, yeah, there, there's like I said, there's really not a lot you can't practice and or train for with an air gun now. Well, it's, it's a big step above dry firing. Dry firing is great, but... You don't, you actually, you know, with this example, you could be shooting in your backyard or your basement or whatever, and you could actually see if you're accurate, right? You're, you're shooting the target. You have projectiles going down range. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, we actually sell, um, they're, they're made here in the USA. They're called dust double BBs. Um, and it's, a, it's actually a frangible BB. Uh, now they don't work in every BB gun out there, but they work in most of them. Uh, and you can actually set up steel targets in your basement or your backyard and shoot them and get that nice audible ding, you know, when you hit that steel. Um, there, there's definitely something to that. You set up a couple of them and, and you can, you know, do target transitioning uh, and, and a ton of other stuff for practice, which is just awesome. Uh, and still get that kind of realistic experience like you would at the range. You're absolutely right. We've used those Dust Devil BBs and... And it's important to note, like, well, why? Well, number one, if you want to shoot up, um, shoot steel targets, reactive targets, metal targets, you can get some rimfire steel and, like you said, set up your backyard. But you can't or shouldn't do that with regular BBs. Uh, and why is that, Tyler? Uh, they're going to ricochet. Uh, yeah. You know, steel steel is not typically the best thing. Um, yeah, so if you're going to do that, which a lot of people do that, uh, definitely make sure you have your safety glasses on and that there's no breakable surfaces anywhere around you because they'll go bouncing everywhere. But the great thing about those dust devils is they give you an alternative that's safer uh, with no ricochet to shoot those steel targets with. Yeah, I mean, they, they literally turn to dust. It's yep. it's pretty cool. They're a little bit lighter weight, right? Yeah, it's just, uh, just about a grain lighter. Typical BBs, steel BBs are 5.1 grains. These come in right around 4.3 or 4.4 um, so a little bit lighter, you get a little bit more velocity out of your gun, which, you know, it's a, it's a BB gun. It's three, 400 feet per second. It's not going to give you a ton uh, of velocity there, but that's not what they're for. Like they're more for that practical application, you know, keeping the knife edge sharp, as I like to say. Yes. Now I kind of teased it at the beginning of the show, but laws are different when it comes to air guns. And there are some kind of neat advantages for shooters with that. Maybe explain a few of those differences. Yeah, you know, it's um, so when we talk about non-discharge laws, which was I, I think that's what you're getting at. Am I right? Well, there, there's a bunch of them, right? There's the there's the discharge laws. There's also the buying a full auto gun. Yep. It's shooting full auto, pull the trigger and hold the trigger down. It's going to keep firing. 
like it's a machine yeah. gun, but it's not a gun because it's an air gun. Is that is that my yeah. am I explaining that the right way? Uh, yeah, basically. So you know, if you think about um, the uh, read my sarcasm here, the wonderful organization that is the ATF um, that stands for Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Air guns, unless you're in the state of like Illinois and New Jersey, are not considered firearms. So um, what that means for you is that there are air guns that are full auto capable, whether they're BB or pellet guns. We have both. Um, and that means you can get them shipped right to your door, which is super cool. Um, and they're a ton of fun. It's, uh, if you've ever handled one or witnessed somebody handling one, uh, you know, and Ryan, you could speak to this, uh, the smile that comes to your face almost immediately is like, like nothing else except for having the opportunity to shoot a full auto firearm, which we all know doesn't happen, uh, with all, with a lot of frequency anyway. I'm sure many people out there have done it. Um, but it's not something that, that most of us have access to. So to be able to get a replica, you, whether it's something historical like a, a broom handle Mauser pistol, for example, or an M1A1, or uh, well, there's tons of them. You know, some of the replicas out there, like you said before, are just so realistic. Uh, you know, you just can't match it unless you get the real thing. And uh, I don't know about you. I don't have ten grand burning a hole in my pocket to, <laughs> right. to drop on it. Right. Uh, item, right. Well, Tyler, I have a funny little story. We were we were shooting some air gun stuff, um, shooting video of these air guns <laughs> last year, and you guys had sent, I believe it was a Beretta ninety two BB gun, and yeah, yep, and uh, and I and I'd read up on it, and and so we're shooting it, and I didn't even tell the camera guys what I was going to do, but. I'm going, yeah, this is really neat. It has the, that look and feel. It even has kind of the similar weight, and the magazines have a similar weight. And, you know, it's really fun. You can shoot, shoot, shoot. And there's this little bitty switch on the back. And you know what I did? I turned it to yeah. full auto. It goes, and it's a Beretta 92 that goes full auto. It goes, and the camera guys almost, like, came off of, you know, of, of me because they were so shocked when it started shooting full auto, um, it was really fun. And then they're going, wait a minute, we got to do that again. We got to do it in slow-mo. This is, this yep. is amazing. <laughs> yeah, they, they are, uh, really incredible. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's that exact thing, right? I, I remember a couple of years ago when the, uh, the Crossman DPMS first came out, it was like really the first true replica of an AR that had both blowback uh, and full auto capability. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we were at the NRA show and I was on the line and demoing it. And there were a bunch of people shooting other stuff. And I just flipped it to full auto and just let loose with dust doubles on the steel target. That was only like five or six yards away. And the entire room went silent. <laughs> like, and everybody was like, I want to shoot that thing. <laughs> now all of a sudden there's a line for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, it, but but that's what it's all about. It's uh, it's one of those things that's unique to air guns right now um, that really makes full auto and fun accessible for everyone. Well, just as an example, I'm as we talk, I'm scrolling around on Pyramid Air's website. The Umarex Legends MP40 CO2 mm -hmm. BB submachine gun. It's an MP40, and yes, it's full auto and semi-auto, and it looks exactly like an mp40 yep you can 52 you can, round magazine 52 round magazine and yeah. you can dump it i mean <laughs> it, it's like 1.3 seconds and it's gone oh my goodness yeah and for 200 bucks you have a really fun toy to to mess around with and probably it's you know it's the type of thing that at any barbecue you bring that out and everybody goes wait a minute can i shoot this yeah yeah Here's some safety glasses. Point it in the safe direction. Let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's it's something that um is a lot because there's not as much noise involved. You don't have to wear hearing protection with a lot of this stuff. It's a lot less intimidating to young shooters or to new shooters. Um, so it's actually a great way to learn as well. Uh, it is a know, great way to learn. I mean, and a lot of the controls are are the same or similar. Yeah, exactly. It's um it, it's a great tool at the end of the day. And I think one of the things that I've been preaching to a lot of folks is, uh, you know, if you're new to firearms, you kind of owe it to yourself, especially with the, the difficulty or the cost of getting ammo right now. And then range time beyond that, 
you know, you really owe it to yourself to get an air gun, right? Because it's going to give you that realistic training application that's going to get you more familiar with the function of the firearm you've just bought so that when you do finally get out to the range, even if you just have one or two boxes of ammo, you're going to know what you're doing without having to learn on the fly. Yes, you're, you're right. And heck, for whatever, depending on what you get, somewhere between 50 bucks and 200 bucks for a really cool air gun, and then $10 for 1,500 rounds, BBs, uh, you're yep. in business. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, pellets aren't that much more expensive. You're talking about, you know, most of the pellets that are going to be shooting in these replica guns, um, like the SIGs are a great example. They have a 320 M17 replica, a mm-hmm. uh, MCX replica. Both of those shoot pellets. You know, you're looking at eight or nine bucks for 500 pellets right there. So um, considerably less expensive and higher quantity than what you're going to be able to find on the firearm side. I will warn you because I have I have a regular old uh, Daisy kind of lever action style. Actually, it's not even a Red Rider, but I had a Red Rider. But I have that one that's little. And mm-hmm. my, I get my kids started with that, but then quickly it moves into the MCX, the SIG MCX uh, pellet gun. And then all of a sudden, yep. no one wants to shoot my Daisy anymore. <laughs> well, that's all right. It's only 30 bucks. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's, but I'm like, well, but girls, this was, this would, this was daddy's gun. They're like, uh huh. Cool story, dad. Can I shoot the right. SIG? <laughs> Yeah, the, you, you will get that. that. That's probably the only downside to the uh, to the cool factor that a lot of these modern replicas have is that um, when why would you ever want to have to cock the gun with each shot, regardless of the method you're doing it with, when you can just pull that trigger and you know you get you get that semi auto or, or full auto function. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's very easy to see why folks like it. Yep, I've said it before, I'll say it again. When you start messing around with modern air guns, you just you just can't believe how much fun they are. So I'll throw it out there again. If you're listening, you go, okay, I, I might need to do this. Um, just enter Gun Talk Nation at checkout, and you'll receive $10 off any $50 purchase at pyramidair.com. Tyler, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ryan. I appreciate it. Super fun. So go check them out. Um, Airguns, pyramidair.com. It's it's seriously a game changer, and you'll get a whole bunch of trigger time. That's it for us. We'll see you next time on Gun Talk Nation. 